So I saw Doctor Strange and it was nice. I liked his outfits. Anyway, then I got to the scene after the credits. Oh, spoilers, by the way, for the scene after the credits. So I got to the scene after the credits where they reveal that Doctor Strange is going to be teaming up with Thor and Loki, I assume in Thor Ragnarok. And I was like, of course, like perfect sense because they're the Avengers that clash the least with him because they've got that same like, there's a fly. They've both got that like mysticism back story thing going on. And then I started picturing what that would be like, like as a character dynamic, and it kind of felt really weird. I mean, Doctor Strange is a brilliant, smart Alec with magical powers, and that's also what Loki is. And then I started thinking about like what Doctor Strange actually is as a character, and I was like, why is that so familiar? So Doctor Strange is brilliant at what he does, usually the most competent guy in the room, but he knows that and that makes him cocky. His biggest character flaw when we meet him is probably his arrogance or his carelessness, like his inability to take things seriously. He's a jerk, but ultimately we like him because he's a jerk with a heart of gold. So who does that sound like? We're doing an interactive thing today. It's like Sesame Street. I bet you said Tony Stark. Oh wait, but you also might have said Star-Lord. One guy in the back was probably like Ant-Man. Oh, and Thor's like that too. He just speaks whimsically, so you don't notice that he's the same. I'm not trying to be mean. Having the same characters with the same traits isn't a bad thing. It doesn't mean they're bad writers. You know, there are just certain character archetypes that resonate with people. And that's cool. And if you're trying to make a really big summer blockbuster about some kind of topic that most people might find goofy or have trouble engaging in, this is like a really good kind of character to lead it because it'll keep the tone really light and accessible. Besides, these kind of characters are fun and crazy. Uh-oh, what's he gonna say next? something sassy. People like to live vicariously through their cool confidence and the way that they always have the perfect thing to say. Especially if they're like somebody that's not confident, like maybe if they were like a shy nerd boy or something, something like that. And I mean the idea of your main character having hubris as his fatal flaw has been around literally forever, according to history. They carbon dated those stories and they dated them to forever ago. BC. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's 100% okay if Doctor Strange is like Tony Stark. It's not a big deal. You know when it is a big deal though? When they all have to hang out with each other and that's a thing that's going to happen because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and now everybody's got to meet each other. In Avengers, this wasn't like an issue because the only guys in that movie who are like this type are Tony Stark and Thor. And so for that, they just kind of took Thor, the less popular of the two characters, and just like watered him down and just made him like a dumb jock who doesn't get pop culture references. And that worked okay. Nobody's crying themselves to sleep because Thor didn't get enough screen time. But like, what about Infinity War? Everybody's showing up for that one. And there's a lot more characters now. What, are we gonna have like six smart aleck characters all just sitting in like a boardroom together, just quipping irreverently in an endless circle with no clear winner? Will Tony Stark, Peter Quill, and Scott Lang all have different condescending pop culture referencing nicknames for the supervillain? Is the fight sequence going to grind to a halt for 30 seconds so they can all take turns saying their nicknames? Obviously with a pause for audience laughter in between each. I guess the good news is Infinity War is going to have to feature so many characters that they'll probably just allot enough screen time for each character to deliver one zinger and then move on to the next one. Anyway, I know what you're gonna say. Not all men in the Avengers are this type of character. And that's true. Hulk is a sensitive, scholarly type. Captain America is selfless and honest. Hawkeye is also there. Vision is a sensitive, scholarly type, and Quicksilver is dead. I think the thing is there are only so many straightforward character types that are going to resonate with your audience, and that's fine. Like, I keep saying, like, that's not a big deal. It's fine. But when you decide you're going to have a big old movie with 25 major characters, each of whom can carry their own movie by themselves, you're probably just going to start to see the personality types bump into each other a little bit. It's like if Disney decided to do a movie where Anna from Frozen co-stars with Rapunzel. I'm sorry, you guys but they're literally the same person. Oh, also, can we consider that of all the non-jerks I listed, Captain America is the only one that's allowed to carry his own films? And no, the movie about Edward Norton's Hulk doesn't count. Of course, we also have Thor, who's one of the few showboating jerk characters who actually seem to mature by
by the beginning of his sequel instead of just hitting like the hard reset we usually see so we can still have adventures with these fun characters. But then they made up for that by having reformed Loki as like the co-star so we still have our hero that makes like kind of mean jokes and is clever. In fact, they probably only had him get more serious and mature so we would have like an odd couple thing with Loki. You know, I honestly can't believe they didn't write the Winter Soldier as like the designated wisecracker for that series. The fact that they didn't is literally a Christmas miracle. I don't know, whoever decided that earnest superheroes are so much less marketable? Superheroes who aren't super great at things on their first try, and they're kind of socially awkward. Just shy, unassuming guys. I know egotistical jerks are like unlikely superheroes, but maybe there are other kinds of unlikely superheroes that are also interesting. Maybe people we can like a little bit more. Anyway, that's my review of Doctor Strange. Check it out in theaters again and again, every summer and holiday season for the next 10 years. Because just like Dormammu, we are trapped in a loop, watching the same characters in the same arcs over and over again. And if we're at an AMC theater, we're also tortured by great hunger because we can't even get a free refill on our large popcorn because there's a new policy where you have to sign up for their membership program to qualify. Check it out today. Like, his wardrobe is so well cultivated. He's even got homeless-looking clothes. Christine, I've lost everything pursuing these useless treatments. I sold all my furniture and all my clothes. And then I bought new clothes that look sadder. Got a sad coat and then a hoodie under that coat. And I put the hood up because I'm a broken man, Christine.